I wanted to talk about Jehovah's Witnesses suffering a mass attack on one of their kingdom halls not too long ago in Germany. Now, this happened a little while ago, but it's taken me this long to talk about it. The reason I took so long to formally directly address this situation, Jehovah's Witnesses being attacked like this, because I really wanted more information to come out about this before really discussing this. If you're new to my channel, I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness, and I'm very critical of the religion, so this is the exact type of thing that I should be talking about. Now, there are a few news articles that I wanted to look at to kind of clarify the picture of what happened when a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall was attacked by a gunman. Unfortunately, they're in German, by and large, because this happened in Germany. And I, yeah, I'm just, I don't know what to answer on this. Nicht mehr asgesen, schlesen, or zur startseat. I don't know. I don't know what these words are or what they mean or if I should check the box or not. Somebody speak German can help me out here. I don't know what this... <laughs> I don't know what this says. Hang on, let me blow it up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. All right, I, I, I'm just going to click a button. I'm going to click a button and hope for the best. I think it's this one because they want you to press the big red highlighted thing, right? So I'm going to hit Schlissen, I think. Send, wait, send stuff to me. I'm your resident German speaker. Okay, I appreciate that. I think I'm going to hit this. I guess I got it right because it went away. Close. Okay. Schlesen is close. Okay. So I was right. I was, I, my guess was correct. Awesome. So what happened with this Jehovah's Witness situation? Let's talk about it. I'm going to start from the beginning in case you're just hearing this. You're, you know, it's five years in the future. You're unfamiliar with the situation or something like that. I want to read this article with Der Spiegel, I think is what it's called. It's kind of like Time Magazine for Germany, I believe. And then this is a German tabloid, but it gives us more insight into the religion and how they're reacting to this on a local level. But before we look at those, let's look at a BBC article on it. God, I hate pop-ups more than anything on this planet. You know, I was browsing through my website. I have ads on my website. And I was browsing through it the other day, trying to check and make sure everything was like aligned properly and stuff. And I load a page and an ad popped up like mid page load. And I clicked it thinking that I was clicking a link that had loaded on the page. And it took me to like an advertiser's website. It was so annoying. I literally went to AdSense and deleted that style of ad entirely from the list of things that Google can display on my website. Sometimes ads piss me off so much it's unimaginable. As long as they're unobtrusive and out of the way and not annoying, then I'm good. Anyway, so this is the BBC article, Hamburg attack, seven killed in attack on Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall. Seven people have been killed in an attack on a Jehovah's Witness meeting hall in the German city of Hamburg. They say the gunman acted alone in Thursday's attack and later took his own life. His motives are unknown. The suspect, named only as Philip F., is said to have had ill feelings toward the religious community of which he had previously been a member. Now, it should be pretty clear by now why I felt the need to address this, because I also have ill will or ill feelings toward the organization. Not the people, but the organization. And I'm also an ex-member. But I, you know, I have to put it on record, plain and simple. I absolutely do not stand for something like this. I feel like we should be showing solidarity with the Jehovah's Witnesses who suffered this attack. You know, this is the kind of thing that we hear about a lot in the United States. This is ridiculously uncommon in Europe. So the fact that this happened, and the fact that it happened to a Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall, is absolutely mind-blowing and wrong, deeply wrong. Now, I don't feel like we need to logic our way into denouncing this. I feel like this should be pretty obviously denounced, right? This is evil and, and wrong, and it should be that simple to say. But if you need an extra additional layer of logic, aside from this is immoral and wrong and evil, then let me lay this additional layer of logic down for you. What if the people that were taken out weren't even Jehovah's Witnesses? What if they were just going to try to rebuild a relationship with their family members? For all you know, that's what it was. For all you know, these people weren't even Jehovah's Witnesses. And aside from all of that, 
Jehovah's Witnesses are really just victims of brainwashing more than anything, and now victims of violence as well. It's deeply wrong that this happened and needs to be denounced. Anyway, let's keep reading this. Eight people were injured, four seriously. A Ugandan and Ukrainian were among those hurt. A woman who was seven months pregnant was attacked, killing her unborn baby. The mother survived. The first emergency call came at 21.04 local time on Thursday. Yeah, that's 9.04 p.m. on Thursday to report that shots had been fired in the building on Dilboge Street. Gross Borstal District, the police said. I apologize for my pronunciations. I'm doing my best. Officers were on site four minutes later, and they were almost immediately joined by special forces. The officers had to break windows to enter the building where about 50 people had gathered. The suspect, described as 35-year-old sports shooter who had a gun license, which, again, is really difficult to get in European countries, had fled to the first floor. His lifeless body was found shortly afterwards. He'd managed to shoot nine magazines of ammunition, and 20 more were found in his backpack. So let's talk about the guy. Let's talk about who he was and what he believed. There's an article on France 24, which is, uh, as far as I can tell, a really trustworthy website. They're above board. They're really high quality, really trustworthy. So let's just start from the beginning. This is kind of a breakdown of who this guy was, what he believed, why he was disfellowshipped, the whole nine yards. Hamburg Gunman, disturbed entrepreneur who penned apocalyptic book. Details are emerging about the gunman who took out six Jehovah's Witnesses in Germany, painting a picture of a disturbed businessman who battled paranoia and penned an apocalypse-themed book. Police identified the attacker as Philip F., a 35-year-old ex-member of the Christian group who targeted the congregation at a Hamburg meeting hall before turning the gun on himself. Investigators are still seeking a motive for the attack on Thursday evening, which also left eight people wounded. You don't have to look far for a motive. This is absolutely never justified, ever, under any circumstances. I don't care who you are or, or what. I don't care. It's not justified. But there is an absolutely horrific level of mistreatment that comes out of the Jehovah's Witness religion against ex-members. They shun them, they mistreat them, they look at them like they're trash, like they're worthless, they're worthless garbage. They have said as much to me. My mom told me that I am repulsive to her because I'm not a member anymore. So you don't have to look far for a motive. Like I said, it's not justified, but you don't have to look far. On Amazon, Philip F., the attacker, was promoting his self-published book, The Truth About God, Jesus Christ, and Satan, a mix of business management advice and fundamentalist prose. So I'm reading into this that he was disfellowshipped for heresy, or for apostasy is what they would call it. If he wrote an apocalyptic book about Jesus and Satan and everything, that's the reason he was kicked out, no doubt about it. It's now been removed from the site, but German media said it details his three-year personal journey to hell and describes a higher heavenly government with 101 million spiritual beings. None of this is in line with Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs. They don't believe in hell, and also they don't believe that 101 million spiritual beings will exist in heaven or whatever other thing. Like, this is completely outside the Jehovah's Witness belief system. Philip F. says he was brought up in a strict evangelical family and reportedly had prophetic dreams in childhood. Again, very outside of Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs. This is completely different from Jehovah's Witnesses. I can't even believe that the dude was like part of the religion, just based off of what I'm reading here. The 292-page book presents the COVID pandemic and the war in Ukraine as divine punishments and outlines fears of a third world war. The writing expresses pro-Russian and misogynistic views, according to Der Spiegel newspaper, which we're going to look at the, the Der Spiegel article in a minute. But taking a political stand, being pro-Russian like that, that's not something a Jehovah's Witness would ever do. And it, I mean, misogynistic views, that doesn't surprise me at all. Troubled businessman. The gunman's professional website is packed with references to the Bible and Liverpool Football Club. He backs the end of combustion engines and advocates for the maximization of happiness in the lives of humans and animals. Okay, that's sounding a little Jehovah's Witnessy. It's full of prophecies, too. That, 
That is apostasy. That's not Jehovah's Witnessy at all. He foresees a major shift in the architecture of the world we live in and in the sky where ghost people live. Dude was not connected to reality at all and was also seemingly not Jehovah's Witness at all. He didn't believe it in any way. On his webpage and LinkedIn account, Philip F. presented himself as a successful businessman. I bet. He offered counseling and general management services for 250,000 euros or $266,000 a day. Wow, dude. Justifying the princely sum with his self-professed ability to generate added value of 2.5 million euros for companies. That's ridiculous on so many levels. How was the guy surviving? He certainly was not making any money off of his companies, right? He also advertised his holistic approach encompassing theology and law. Dude had problems. The single entrepreneur lost his job in 2020 and described himself as an as a self-employed financial consultant, though his website does not mention any recent assignments. Investigators say he appeared to be embroiled in disputes with several companies, filing criminal complaints including against a Bavarian firm where he was previ- where he was previously employed. Anger and warnings. Police said the gunman left the religious community around a year and a half ago. Apparently not on good terms. Yeah, I would say so. It sounds like he wrote the book, uh, whatever it was called, this apocalyptic prophetic book, and probably got kicked out for apostasy. That's my best guess. By some accounts, he chose to leave, but other witnesses said he was shunned. Right, so Jehovah's Witnesses are, you know, they're kind of on the fence about admitting to kicking people out in the first place. It sounds like he was probably kicked out for writing that book. The Build newspaper, which from my understanding is a tabloid, but I have that pulled up also. We're going to look at that. The Build newspaper reports that he was excluded following the publication of his apocalyptic business book. Yeah, that checks out. He's probably disfellowshipped and shunned, but he didn't even seem to grow up in it. Did he have any roots there? Did he have any family in the religion? It doesn't appear that he did. I don't know. An anonymous tip-off was sent to the Weapons Control Authority in January. It claimed that Philip F. may have been suffering from an undiagnosed mental illness and had a particular anger against religious members or against the Jehovah's Witnesses and his former employer. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Jehovah's Witnesses can't really be trusted to be honest about some things. Because they will go to literally any lengths to leave people's lives in shambles if they decide to walk away from the religion. They very intentionally and specifically try to make it look like your life is ruined when you leave because they want it to serve as a message to other people who might be thinking about leaving. So you can't really trust current members view of ex members obviously this just so happened to be correct you know the guy was deranged and had serious deep issues but you know i i I find it difficult to trust current jehovah's witnesses assessments of act or of ex jehovah's witnesses anyways so that makes sense police visited him at his modest flat in a gray building in the west of hanseatic city but said they did not find anything of serious concern and left, saying he had been cooperative. He was little known in his neighborhood, according to German media. He was legally in possession of the weapon he used in the attack. So that's the uh, France 24 article about who this guy was. He didn't seem to have any connections to the religion. You know, he didn't grow up in it. How did he join? It's really difficult to join. And it sounds like he got kicked out for apostasy to me. So there were a couple of articles that were written. Like I said, builds, it was mentioned in that last article. It's a tabloid. So you got to take it with a grain of salt, the things that build says. But let's just kind of glance through real quick. These are all in German, by the way, the ones that we're looking at from here. Eight days after Philip F. went on a rampage in Hamburg, the police are in are intensively investigating the area surrounding the seven-time murderer. The focus of the investigators is to look for possible accomplices. Police spokeswoman Sandra... Levgrun. Basically, these surveys are there to get a complete picture of Philip F. The goal is to answer the question of why for the victims and their relatives. According to police spokeswoman Levgrun, the community members 
of the police do not make it easy for their interviews. It's difficult. You actually have to say that. This is quite a closed circle. Again, I'm translating from German to English, so hopefully you kind of get the idea behind what's being said here. But the point is Jehovah's Witnesses have apparently been told not to cooperate with police. Now, like I said, this is a tabloid and should be taken with a grain of salt, everything in it. But there's more. There's more to this story to back up what I just said. They have apparently been told not to cooperate with police, not communicate with the police. And that makes sense. Jehovah's Witnesses are told not to do that all the time. That's the basis for some of the biggest problems in the religion. You know, they have a habit of covering up CSA covering up a uh, child's mistreatment in the religion. And the reason that this is a problem is because they do not want to uh, involve the outside authorities. Jehovah's Witnesses as a religion are set up in such a way that they want to create their own government. They want to act as a sovereign government because they believe one day the government's going to fall and there's not going to be anyone else around to take control. So they're going to step in and fill the role for their people. They are they are the government for all intents and purposes. And they don't like other government officials, even police investigating a crime, poking around their stuff. So it completely makes sense that the police spokeswoman that's investigating this attack on their kingdom hall says, this is quite a closed circle. It's difficult to get interviews. They won't interview. That makes complete sense. Look at Der Spiegel. This is kind of like Time Magazine, I think, or maybe People Magazine. It's the German version of it, created in 1947. Let's read what they had to say. Churches want to commemorate the victims of the killing spree. Jehovah's Witnesses cancel the events. People in the community have been going to the Kingdom Hall and laying wreaths down and flowers and trying to comfort them and work with them and talk to them. And Jehovah's Witnesses are turning them away. They refuse to take part in any events commemorating the suffering or showing solidarity or anything. They, they don't want it. They want nothing to do with it. That's weird, right? This is exactly in line with what I expect from Jehovah's Witnesses as an organization, as a religion. Everything that they're doing right now, refusing to cooperate with the police, refusing to take part in these commemoration events, all of this other stuff, everything. It's all orders being passed down from the top down. That's just how this operates. And why, I hear you asking, why would they turn commemorative events away? Why would they refuse to, you know, take wreaths from people or, or flowers or accept solidarity from them or whatever? Because it would show that the world is not as evil as they think it is. If every other Jehovah's Witness out there knew that the outside world, non-Jehovah's Witnesses, had solidarity with them, it would shatter the perception that they have of the outside world. They are trained from, from birth. I was trained from birth to believe that non-Jehovah's Witnesses are evil and hate me. I was trained to believe that they hate anybody who is, you know, er I was trained to believe that they hate everybody who is like part of the true religion. Or I was trained to believe that they hated Jehovah's Witnesses particularly for one reason or another, when that's very obviously not true. And it's being proven false by people trying to commemorate and work with them on this situation. So let's read this article, see what it says. To commemorate the victims of the Jehovah's Witness attack, the Christian churches are planning a memorial service on Sunday. The religious community itself does not want to officially take part. They don't want to be a part of the community. They don't want to be a part of the world because then it, then it shows the existing members inside the religion that it's not so bad. It's not so bad on the outside. Giving space to mourning, this is how the goal can be described with which the Christian churches want to commemorate the victims of rampage, I'm sorry, of the rampage among Jehovah's Witnesses in Hamburg. Again, this is translated to English from German, so forgive any weird grammatical problems. At the heart of the planned ecumeni wait, ecum ecumenical, I've never heard that word in my life, representing a number of different Christian churches. Okay, that is a brand new word to me, ecumenical. 
At the heart of the planned ecumenical celebration will be intercessions and the lighting of four candles to symbolize specific groups, a spokesman for the North Church said. One each for victims and those affected, for the neighborhood, for helpers and responders, and for peace. Clarifying conversation with Jehovah's Witnesses is this subheading. Before the event in Hamburg's main church of St. Petri, Sunday, 5 p.m., there had been unrest about the event. Michael Sifidaris from Jehovah's Witnesses in northern Germany was surprised and outraged. In these discussions, these plans, not a single one of the victims or the relatives is involved, let alone the community of Jehovah's Witnesses, who certainly want to find a way in their own way and wise to conduct a funeral service according to their Christian principles. If this is a funeral service or a memorial, it would be against the rules for Jehovah's Witnesses to participate anyways. That would be a part of Christendom. It's against the rules for them to be present or take part in worldly rituals, including weddings of people who are not active members or funerals of non-active members that is not run by the church itself. There is now talk of a communication breakdown. The Jehovah's Witnesses support the ecum ecnu, wait, ecumenical. God, that's what a weird word. They support the ecumenical commemoration. I think it's good if other faith communities also testify to their solidarity with us. Sephardis told the hamburger Abenblatt. Oh my God, dude, these words. But he also said, however, there will be no official participation by Jehovah's Witnesses. In last week's attack, a former member of Jehovah's Witnesses took out seven people, including an unborn child, with a and then took himself out. Nine other people were injured in the act of 35-year-old Philip F. during a meeting in a meeting room of the religious community. A joint conversation between the churches and Jehovah's Witnesses took place on Thursday, said the spokesman for the Northern Church, which is organizing the commemoration together with the Archdiocese and the Working Group of Christian Churches. The discrepancies were cleared up, the spokesman said. The commemoration should not and cannot replace a funeral service by Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses have announced that they want to say goodbye to the dead in their own way. Yeah, yeah, this can't be a funeral service. If it were... Jehovah's Witnesses would lose their minds over that. So the point is, Jehovah's Witnesses are a closed circle, refusing to cooperate with the police, according to Build. Yeah, according to Build, the newspaper Build. It's a closed group that refuse to work with the authorities on the investigation. They refuse to take part in any commemoration or memorial events with the outside world. They want to be insular. They want to handle this alone, without the outside world. And they, clear as day, seems to me, don't want anybody from inside the religion knowing that the outside actually cares about them. So anyways, Philip F., deranged nutcase, disgusting and evil, no excuse for this type of thing, and we should show solidarity for Jehovah's Witnesses, or show solidarity with them. But we should also be aware that they f hate you because you're an apostate, and they still deserve criticism, despite the fact that they just suffered a terrible loss and should have solidarity with others, should have support. You know, those Jehovah's Witnesses were victims of brainwashing and are now victims of violence, and we should, at the very least, recognize that. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. It's pretty sad stuff, man. I'm sorry for the Jehovah's Witnesses that had to suffer this. I'm sorry for the ones that lost their lives. I'm sorry for their friends and family. And I'm sorry for the ones that had to cower in fear from this disgusting monster. I'm sorry they had to deal with this. But, you know, we can't shy away from criticizing this group because they definitely deserve the criticism.